Okay, and we are here, and I'm going to talk about some angular momentum conservation. Um, this is going to be something that's similar to a ballistic pendulum uh, that we had for linear momentum. A um, couple of reminders about angular momentum and conservation laws in general. We're talking about uh, conservation for a system. Okay, and this happens for angular momentum when there's no torque, no net torque acting on the system itself. Uh, individual objects, don't forget, can change angular momentum. It uh, happens all the time, but collectively, that's when we have conservation. So here's a case where we have um, a little block or something sliding in, and uh, it's going to run into the stick, which is just hanging there. They stick together, so an inelastic collision, and it swings. Okay, so we'll assume that we, we can measure the angle at which that the system swings upward. And from that, we're, our goal is to try to figure out what exactly is, is this the initial. Okay. How fast does that block have to be slide in order to, to kick it up to that angle? OK, so um, obviously, you know, linear motion is, is not being conserved here because uh, you, you have swings. <laughs> Um, the angle's changing, uh, directions are changing, linear momentum is not conserved. However, angular mo momentum will be. Um, so, we have this condition where the initial is equal to the final. And uh, in this case, um, we've got the block coming in. That's the only thing moving. So, we want to make use of this definition. It's a point mass moving in a straight line, but relative to the axis of rotation, which is up here at the hinge, um, we can define an angular momentum. So that's going to be the, the mass of the block times its initial speed, whatever that is, times the distance from the axis. That's going to be the length of the stick. And it's sliding at a 90 degree angle between the, the line of motion and that radius line. Now afterwards, the block and the stick stick together. And so we need that the total inertia. Now we're, now we're going to have a rotation. And that's, um, you know, we, we have a moment of inertia. We've got angular velocity. Uh, now for a stick, swinging about one of its ends, it's one third its mass times the length squared. The block we're going to treat as a point mass. So that's its mass times the distance squared from the axis. Okay. So that means if, if we're able to figure out what uh, the angular speed is after the collision happens, we should be able to work backwards and ultimately figure out what the linear speed of the block was. So the question is, how do we get that angular speed? Well, we're going to use energy. Um, now, notice a couple things happen here. Uh, the block, after the collision, goes up a certain height. Okay. We can find that just like we, we normally would do for a pendulum, where uh, we can make use of this triangle here. This leg is L times the cosine of that angle. So the height is the total length minus L cosine theta. Um, that means that the block has some potential energy uh, after this collision happens. So L minus L cosine. But now the thing is, the stick also swings up. It has some potential energy in this final position. Now, for, for real objects like this, we have to make use of the height that the center of mass goes up. Let me change colors here. And now, originally, the, the center of mass of the stick was halfway down. So that center of mass goes up some height right there. Um, this height is going to be um, half the length of the stick. Okay, minus half the length of the stick times cosine theta. So the same idea, but it's a different height. 
that it goes up compared to what the black goes up. Okay, so so the mass of the stick is m2 times gravity, and then we're going to have this new quantity, l over 2 minus l over 2 cosine theta. So that's the gain in, in potential energy at that big angle, okay, where, where it comes to a stop. Where did it come from? Well, it came from the rotational energy, one half i omega squared. Okay. So here's the angular speed that we're after. Now we can go through and we could solve for this. It's I'm doing it symbolically, so it's kind of a mess. But this is really just to kind of outline and, and remind ourselves how to go about problems like this. Um, we can handle it. Um, energy is conserved after the collision happens, when when the system, that, that stick and the block are just swinging back and forth. Okay, that's It's a plane pendulum, um, called a physical pendulum in this case. But the, the point is, energy is conserved after the fact. That's what, that's what this is all about. Um, we can use that energy to figure out that final speed. Once we get it, we can plug it into our angular momentum equation. And ultimately, we can solve for that final speed of, or that, the original speed of, of the block before the collision happens. Okay, so this is a pretty typical sort of setup. Um, the important piece is our conservation, both of energy after the fact, after the collision, and the only thing that connects to before and after pictures is the conservation of angular momentum in this case. Okay, so I, I hope that uh, this helps. And until next time, uh, we'll see you later.